Welcome to Trader TV, your insight into the trading climate for professional investors. I'm Dan Barnes. In January's show, we're revealing the impact of Europe's MIFID II rules on investment trading. In fixed income markets, liquidity is often at a premium, requiring a smart approach to accessing the markets via new instruments. Today, we're hearing from Brett Pybus, head of iShares EMEA Fixed Income ETF Product Strategy at BlackRock, and Lee Bartholomew, head of Fixed Income and FX Products R&D at Eurex about the use of options on exchange-traded funds in supporting pricing and liquidity. Brett, welcome to Trader TV. Thanks, Dan. It's great to be here. So what has MIFID II taught us about some of the pricing challenges in the fixed income markets? Um, I think from a, certainly from an ETF perspective, we've got high expectations for MIFID II. Mm-hmm. Um, despite being equities, they weren't included in MIFID I. Um, they are part of MIFID II, so we will see um, trade reporting. Um, that in Europe at least is expected to give a lot more visibility to the market in terms of volume and what's actually going on in, in the uh, uh, ETF market in particular okay. um, in terms of providing visibility. Um, we're starting to see some of that come through already. Um, certain venues are seeing higher volumes, but the challenge of course is a consolidated tape. We haven't yet got that solution. We expect that to come through time and be a, be a big positive for the fixed income ETF industry. And exactly how do ETFs help with the pricing challenges? in the fixed income market? One of the big benefits of bond ETFs to other fixed income investors from our perspective is the transparency they provide. So they effectively shine a light on some pretty opaque markets. Uh, You can see volume data in terms of what's flowing in and out of ETFs on a a very real time basis. So we can see yesterday's flows today. Um, You can see what's been transacted at an exchange level. So trading back and forth between investors, which isn't necessarily leading to buying or selling of bonds. Um, And with trade transparency or trade reporting, you can see levels. So in a sense, you get a real-time view of what's going on in the bond market. So for things like high yield or investment grade credit, we see that as particularly valuable for fixed income investors. Can you tell me what the main motivation was behind launching options on ETFs? Sure, it's really um, it's really all driven by client demand. So we were already seeing an uptick in the use of ETFs by investors who would have historically bought bonds or used derivatives. Um, The launch of options on these ETFs gives these investors a a different tool to express effectively a different view. So you can express long short views, you can put hedges into portfolios using the option. Um, Ultimately it's driven by a lack of efficient hedges, particularly in corporate credit and um, emerging market debt markets. So we see this as a valuable addition to that tool set. when we look at the US market, we've seen significant interest and growth already. Mm-hmm. So if I look at the volumes on our ETFs on high yield or emerging market debt, for example, you know, they're significant and the interest from asset managers, hedge funds, other investors is, is, is growing significantly there. Um, one stat I'll, I'll throw out there is if we look at the volume on um, options on our high yield ETF in the US, on many days that exceeds the volume traded on Apple stock, which I think is quite wow. qu- quite a staggering statistic. Yeah. Um, so it's really catering to demand from our client base and giving them a, a different way of expressing a view based on the ETF. So we've seen an increase in assets under management in ETFs and an increase in trading volumes as well. Well, we've seen the increase in assets through, through recent years. Yeah. Um, we've seen the volumes increase, as I talked about it, they'll become more visible with MIFID, particularly in Europe. So we think that'll be a big fillet for the industry. Yep. Um, we see options as a natural extension of that ecosystem. Um, and we'll have the incremental benefit of broadening the appeal of ETFs, bringing more investors into the ETF ecosystem, increasing awareness and education. What other data can be garnered from ETF options to assist with pricing? We think it provides a a richer picture for investors who are looking at the market. So as I mentioned, ETF flows, ETF volumes, and the the cash instrument in terms of the broad index is useful. Uh, We think options potentially provide a longer term perspective on investor positioning or sentiment. Um, One of the things that we are um, interested in is whether we can see options on ETFs with longer expiries, for example, Mm -hmm. than you might see um, if we think about high yield in the case of CDX options, for example, to give investors a different perspective there. How how does the interaction with complex instruments and cash instruments work when trying to formulate prices? Sure. I mean, I I think, uh, just to be clear, ETFs are are reasonably simple instruments. So think baskets of cash bonds that track very well recognised broad benchmarks. So you've got a fully funded instrument. The option is referenced, or the ETF option is referencing that fully funded basket of cash securities in in the ETF. So from our perspective, given they're physically settled, um, you know, they they should look and behave like any other option from a payoff structure. Um, So we think they're reasonably simple from that standpoint. 
And looking forward, where do you see the greatest appetite coming from in the use of ETFs in the fixed income space? Sure. Um, so we, th we think the primary interest in, in options will be from other asset managers, um, from investors who broadly the traditional toolkit has consisted of cash bonds and derivatives. Yeah. Um, so we think it brings those users into the effect of the ETF ecosystem. What we're seeing today is a lot more demand from exactly those types of investors using ETFs as beta or macro tools. Mm -hmm. They're principally using them to express tactical views or for liquidity purposes. Some of them are using them for hedging today or for market access or operational efficiency purposes. So these are sort of really quite vanilla traditional uses of ETFs. Options obviously provide another layer to that in terms of some of the um, uh, different applications, whether it's hedging or, or putting on explicit long short views. Um, so we see it really as just providing a broader set of macro tools to these investors and you know, where their primary objective is to use these beta tools to generate or protect alpha in their portfolios. Brett, thanks very much for coming on Trader TV. It's a pleasure. Thank you. The use of exchange traded funds by professional investors on both sides of the Atlantic is increasing at pace. They can be used for a number of different functions. And now we're going to speak with Lee Bartholomew, Head of Fixed Income and FX Products R&D at Eurex, about the value of ETF options to trading on both sides of the street. Lee, welcome to Trader TV. Dan, thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. So to start off with, I'd like to talk about some of the pricing challenges that we typically see in fixed income markets. Um, how would you characterise the overall challenge that one sees across the sort of rates and credit markets? I think for me this year and last, you're kind of, you know, rates within Europe and credit within Europe has been priced uh, and the impact of it has been impacted by the macroeconomic environment. So sure. I think when you look at products like ETFs and so forth, I see them as additive uh, to pricing measures. So derivatives on them I see as something which will help to provide additional liquidity across that space. Mm -hmm. And also, as you move through the cycle from an economic perspective, you see more pockets of liquidity as kind of businesses evolve their business model mm -hmm. to the ever-changing kind of demands of the clients as well. From the buy side trading desk, if you take the way that at the moment they are looking for prices, trying to go through the price discovery process, what potentially does do these derivatives add to that? So I think if you look at the US, the US market's quite a, a good yardstick for us to look at Europe to say, what can we do? two, three, maybe five years down the line. And the yeah. reason I say that as use that as a time horizon is if you look at the mix of clients in the US, they have a bigger retail network, which is something in Europe we're yet to establish mm -hmm. in order to use derivatives. Going back to the ETFs and actually doing options on them, one of the reasons for doing that was because some investors are not able to actually invest in the ETF underlying themselves directly. Cool. So by using derivatives, it gives them an opportunity to gain exposure to that asset class because doing it on an exchange gives them that because within their kind of product uh, remit they're able to use exchange traded derivatives. So in terms of what do I see the evolution, I see it actually kind of helping to kind of bring in liquidity both in the cash markets themselves mm -hmm. and in the derivative market in Europe. So for us, it's a good thing that we are there kind of as a first mover. Of course. And so if I was actually on a trading desk, either buy side or sell side, yep. how might I actually use these if we go into the surface a bit? So I think, you know, you've got your cash bonds, which people go, kind of go long and short. The way I look at derivatives is you're using derivatives to express the same view, albeit yeah. on some degree, you know your, uh, your you know, you know your downside. Yeah. by using the derivatives. You know, you can use them in single calls and puts, mm -hmm. or you can use them as part of strategies. I think it depends upon the client itself as to how they're going to use it. So let me provide an example. I think sure. the hedge funds will use it uh, like any other derivative, so a lot more kind of uh, opportunistic, mm -hmm. and they will look to exploit kind of price uh, discrepancies on a short-term basis. Because initially what we're going to do is launch the uh, products are launched on uh, one month out to uh, six month expiries. Yep. Uh, so you won't be able to get a full term structure necessarily like you get in the CDX market mm -hmm. uh, right now. And then you've got the asset manager. I think the asset manager, what they will use it for is a combination of things. They'll either use it to express a view, mm -hmm. they'll use it to hedge a portfolio, uh, or they'll use it as an overlay on a number of portfolios that are looking at kind of a cross asset. Okay, and sometimes people are concerned about using non-cash instruments in terms of risk. How do you see that? 
I think derivatives kind of misrepresented in some respects because I think sure. you use the word derivative and people automatically think leverage. Yes. And, and derivatives can be used both to leverage or deleverage an existing position. So for me, I actually see them as additive to liquidity. And mm -hmm. I think under MIFID 2 as well with uh, transparency and trade reporting, what that then does is you're able to see how clients are using them within their portfolio. And again, it purely depends upon the individual user. So, you know, a fast money account is likely mm -hmm. uh, to not hold the position for a long period of time. Whereas a, a long only or fundamental investor, which has got much more longer term views, I would ex you know, probably expect them to use it more as an overlay yep. or to hold the derivative into expiry, potentially as they're looking at the underlying as well at the same time. And then if you're looking ahead at the, the growth in volume, um, and the appetite for these products, uh, how do you see that expanding over the near to medium term? Yeah, so I think from an exchange perspective, when, when we looked at kind of ETS and moving into the fixed income space, I think, you know, I looked at it from, you know, what does our kind of a portfolio mix look like, A, from a product perspective, and then B, what are the trends in the market? And I think the trends in the market are, if you look at from a bank perspective, we're going more electronic, and I think the markets that are yet to, to see that transition, one is credit and the other is the way that they're setting up their business model. So you've seen a lot of banks look at ETFs as a growth market because mm -hmm. there's real end user demand. So there's that franchise building approach that you need to take. So they're building out their ETF business. Yep. And what I saw that as an opportunity for is to be complementary from an exchange perspective. So, you know, we have the core benchmark European products. And then at the same time, what we're trying to do is say, where is the next market going? And we see credit and ETF options as a market which is set to grow. And you can see that from the inflows that we saw last year into high yield and EM debt, you know, they, they were at record highs. Absolutely. Lee Bartholomew, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. I'd like to thank Brett Pibus at BlackRock, Lee Bartholomew from Eurex, and you for watching. To see our coverage on the impact of MIFID 2 across the equity, credit and rates markets this month, or to subscribe, visit us at tradertv.net.